a federal court decision on you and your kids and your kids' school. That is so insane that I, I needed an expert on to make sure I have the story right and make sure we have the right conclusions so we can properly make sense of this. And I don't want to get I don't want to get all up you know up about a thing that's not right. I'm not reading it right, but but. Uh, it's, it's, this is too almost hard to believe, even now, what the craziest things are. So let's go right to the lawyers of this case. William Hahn is here, attorney for Beckett, Religious Liberty for All. The case is Mahmoud versus McKnight. Will, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm grateful you're here. I'm doing very good. Uh, take us back. This is a school district in Montgomery County, so just north of D.C. Uh, what happened? Yeah, so Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, decided that it was going to adopt a curriculum of a series of books starting in pre-K that went up to fifth grade that would require students to do things like identify a sex worker at a pride parade or how to identify lip rings and underwear at pride parades or teach third graders or people between K through five how to have conversations about changing genders with their parents uh, and that they don't really understand, that their parents don't really understand them. And in addition to reading these books in the classroom, the Board of Education also provided suggested guidance to teachers that when these books would be read in the class and instructed, the teachers would be able to field questions from the students. So for example, if a student asked, well, I thought if you're born a boy, you're a boy, or if you're born a girl, you're a girl, uh, the teacher is suggested to respond by the school board that that's wrong, that that's offensive, that doctors, when we're born, they're just making a guess about who you are and only you really know inside. Uh, this was uh, ex extremely shocking to not just a number of uh, families, which we'll get to in a moment, but uh, initially to many teachers in Montgomery County Public School who thought that this was uh, going to cause serious problems in the classroom and exclude parents. Uh, because the goal, as the was said in the school board uh, information to the teachers, was to disrupt a child's either-or thinking about gender and sexuality. That was the specifically stated goal. And this meant then that uh, a lot of parents wanted to have what is already uh, the policy in Montgomery County Public Schools for everything else that's taught in school, which is advance notice of when these books were going to be read to their kids, and an opportunity to opt their children out of that instruction. Those opt-outs were honored for uh, roughly a whole school year. And then in March of 2023, for reasons that were never publicly explained, Montgomery County Public Schools just pulled the rug out from underneath the parents and withdrew all the opt-outs and said, going forward, we're never going to tell you when we read these books to your kids. You may not even know after it's done, and you'll have no opportunity to opt your children out. This is inconsistent with Montgomery County's own religious diversity guidelines, which require uh, the, the schools to come up with opt-out accommodations for parents on all sorts of things, uh, Valentine's Day, Halloween, band class, music class, even alternative reading assignments. The, the Pride Story books are the only books, the only part of the education experience in Montgomery County Public Schools that you cannot get an opt-out from. It's also inconsistent with Maryland law, which requires uh, advance notice to parents and an opportunity to opt out of any family life and human sexuality instruction. And most fundamentally, it's inconsistent with the Constitution, which protects the right of parents to direct their children's religious upbringing. This is a policy that's premised on excluding the parents from a matter that goes to the core of who they are, which obviously involves a child's religious upbringing. So we brought a lawsuit, and we at the Beckett Fund brought a lawsuit on behalf of a religiously diverse coalition of families, Muslim families, Christian families, including a coalition called Kids First of over 300 families of various religious traditions in Montgomery County, seeking not to eliminate this, the books from the curriculum or take the books out of the schools, but, but fundamentally to direct, to have, to vindicate the right of parents to know when these books are going to be read and, ha and restore their right to opt their children out of these kinds of discussions and readings. That's great. All you wanted was an opt-out Absolutely. Option. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, okay, um, let's go back. Uh, well, I guess let's actually let's conclude it. So the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals said uh, no yeah. to you and you, you, all you Christians and Muslims out there. What, what did they rule? 
Yeah, so we had asked uh, we had asked for what's called a it's tech, the technical term is a preliminary injunction. What that means in in the real world is that we would get the opt outs immediately back for the parents. Uh, that request was denied first uh, in the federal trial court in Maryland, and then we went up to the middle court in the federal system, which is called the Court of Appeals, and we sought review of that decision. And in a two to one decision. Essentially, the Court of Appeals said that parents just have no say when their kids go into public school, that um, because of the public schools being a, a place where we're going to just allow curriculum to be shaped by the public schools, uh, that we're, we're really going to be reluctant as courts to want to get involved and second guess what they do, even though the court itself acknowledged that, especially when we're talking about four-year-olds and five-year-olds, these are highly impressionable young children who are going to instinctively trust their teachers and that you're really going to be coercing them into having a distorted view of the human person based on just being a part of these discussions and being exposed to the books. There was a judge who dissented from that who realized rightly that going to public school is an important benefit in our society. And when you condition access to a benefit on giving up your free exercise of religion, You've got a constitutional problem there, and Montgomery County has no good answer to that constitutional problem, and he was right to say that. And uh, we, are then, we are now looking to appeal the ruling to the U.S. Supreme Court because this does implicate that fundamental right of parents to direct their children's religious upbringing. So I understand a court's reluctance to get involved with the curriculum of a school district. I, I understand that, respect that. But you're not asking to get rid of this book pride puppy where a puppy gets lost at a pride parade and kids are given words to look for on each page for every letter like uh like leather and drag queen q for queen k for drag king uh you're not asking get rid of that filth from my kindergarten's classroom you're just saying give parents the option to opt out what did the court say to that absolutely that's right this is not a challenge to the books themselves the books Stay in the curriculum. I would, by the way. Right. I would chat. Right. <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I am, and I will take the proper ways of doing that. But the, and I understand why that's not the court, but you guys aren't asking. Right. I mean, in terms of the legal question in the case is the right of parents to direct their children's religious upbringing, not the books themselves. And as to that question, I mean, the, the court uh, was of the view that essentially you're not going to be able to have a claim unless someone is actually forcing a four-year-old to like put the book in front of them and say, do you agree with this? I mean, respectfully, that, that's okay. just removed from the real world. Um, four, four-year-olds are highly impressionable. Five-year-olds are highly impressionable. They take direction from their teachers that's implicit, that's indirect. And the free exercise clause of the First Amendment, this is why it protects what's called indirect coercion, which it acknowledges that when you are pressured to modify your beliefs, that that is just as much of a constitutional problem as me forcing you to say something or do something that's inconsistent with your beliefs. We can't slowly boiled frog our way around the First Amendment.